Brothers and sisters in Christ, our reflection is deemed ascension, we are commissioned. And today, let's try to understand what these fees mean for us today, especially with regards to our mission as a church and as disciples of Christ. Well, I'm going to base my sharing today from St. Luke's version of the ascension. The passage is taken from Luke chapter 24, verse 45 to 53. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So it is written that the Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses to this, and now I am sending upon you what the Father has promised. Stay in the city then until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then he took them out as far as the outskirts of Bethany, and raising his hands, he blessed them. Now as he blessed them, he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. They worshipped him and then went back to Jerusalem full of joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. God. Well, the first point that I want to share today is that verse where it is mentioned that they went back to Jerusalem with joy. The ascension experience for the disciples was a joyful experience. Why? Why was it a joyful experience? For us too, when we celebrate the Ascension, is it a joyful experience? Well, in St. Luke's version of the Ascension, we see St. Luke showing how Jesus explained the meaning of his death to the disciples. Whereas in Matthew or Mark's Gospel, we see Jesus' last words to the apostles was telling them to go out and proclaim the good news. Well, St. Luke also tells us that Jesus sent out the disciples. They went out to preach forgiveness to the world, to the nations. But before that, we see Jesus explaining the scriptures. Brothers in Christ, very often we don't make that connection of ascension with all the other events in the Bible or in the church. But if we want to understand ascension, we must see that connection between creation, the fall of man, the coming of Christ at Christmas through his incarnation, and then his passion and death at Good Friday, resurrection at Easter, and now after 40 days he is ascended, and soon he will send the Holy Spirit. All these are connected to one another. We cannot see the ascension just simply in isolation. And so Jesus spent his time after the resurrection explaining to the disciples the meaning of his death, explaining to them the word of God. And as they understood the word, they could find meaning. Yes, joy comes to us 
when we find meaning, brothers and sisters, in Christ. And so the disciples understood that Jesus' death, though it was a terrible event for them, yet that bad, tragic event was part of God's plan. God's plan to save all mankind. Jesus helped the disciples to have a clearer vision of God's plan that right from the very beginning, even though God created man, man sinned against him. And Jesus was referred in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Isaiah, that he will be like a lamb that will be slaughtered for the sins of men. That Jesus was the Messiah that was promised to King David that one of his sons would sit on the throne of an everlasting kingdom. So when the disciples understood more and more the meaning of the coming of Jesus, the meaning of his death, they could now understand that there was a mission for them. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, we will not be evangelizers if we don't really understand God's love for us and the purpose of why Jesus came for us. The more we realize in a very personal way the good news that God loves us even now and just as God loved Jesus in that tragic moment where the father seemingly abandoned him well Jesus on the cross cried out my God my God why have you forsaken me but yet we see in in the life of Jesus on the cross at the very end, he said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Jesus abandoned himself to the Father's will. He perfectly obeyed God. Though Adam had disobeyed God, but the new Adam, through his obedience, brought salvation to the world. And the Father was faithful to him. And Easter was the manifestation of the Father's love, of God's faithfulness. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, even in our own lives, we will go through tragic, difficult moments, painful moments. Sometimes we wonder, why is this happening to me? But the good news reminds us that even in our tragic moments, we can find meaning. The word of God gives meaning. And we can find joy in our lives. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus' ascension would have been a sad experience for the disciples because Jesus was leaving away. But they were not sad because they found meaning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Parting from friends, parting from even sometimes ministry can be difficult. I remember many years ago when I was asked by the bishop to be a deacon, and I went to a retreat in Chiang Mai, a seven days retreat, silent retreat, to spend time with God. And one of the struggles that I was going through at that time, whether to accept this call to be a deacon was whether God was calling me to let go the leadership of the charismatic group that I was in charge in typing. I was the leader of the Covenant community for almost 30 years. And it was difficult because I could not see anyone at that moment suitable to take over. And so during that retreat, I was struggling and praying. And at the last day, on the last hour, as I sat before the Blessed Sacrament and asking God, Lord, this is the last hour. 
please speak to me. And what came to me was the ascension scene where Jesus was saying, yes, I had to go, but until I go, the Holy Spirit will not come. And so he was telling me that this was a moment for me to let go the future of that charismatic group into the hands of God because that group was started by the Holy Spirit and it is the Holy Spirit will take over everything. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, ascension gives us joy because joy comes from hope. This year, the church in Malaysia, the theme is on hope. We need to, to rediscover hope in our lives, especially in these dark moments in our life, in our country, in our world. And we can be hopeful because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God who comes to be with us. And when the apostles realized that God was not going to leave them alone, they could be filled with joy. Yes, hope, joy in our life is not some idea that we have, some optimistic, optimistic thinking that we have. Whereas Christian hope, Christian joy is based on faith in a person. And this person is God. And God is with us until the end of time. And when we have that faith, no matter what happens to us, our feelings of joy and hope is not based on our circumstances. Everything can go wrong. But we believe that God is with us. He will overcome everything in our lives. So the first experience that we need to have as we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension is that we need to rediscover hope, joy in our life. Yes, hope and joy is connected. When we have hope, we can be joyful. The second point that I want to bring out today, Brothers and Christ, again, when the disciples went back to Jerusalem, not only they were filled with joy, but he said that they continuously every day praised God, worshipped God. Yes, the ascension to, should lead us to worship the Lord our God. Well, in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, St. Paul tells us, because St. Paul, Luke was the writer, but Luke was a disciple of St. Paul. And so St. Paul must have told Luke that Jesus spent all those moments, 40 days of the ascension, teaching the people of the meaning of the kingdom of God. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, we can only worship God when we recognize that God is king, God is sovereign, that God rules over everything. And so we see in the ascension story, Jesus being lifted up to heaven, there was even a cloud there. Now the, the word cloud and heaven are biblical, biblical symbols of God's presence. And so here, ascension is not about Jesus going up and up to somewhere up in the universe. No, it is Jesus now who became man, who took upon our humanity. Now he moves into an, another dimension from an earthly dimension to a heavenly dimension. And heaven means 
God. Because now Jesus is said to be seated at the right hand of the Father. What does it mean? It means that now Jesus is with the Father. He is seated, meaning he has finished and accomplished his work, but now seated at the right hand of the Father means that he is with full authority. He is one with God. He is equal with God. It means that Jesus is the sovereign Lord, King of heaven and earth. Best sisters in Christ, very often in the renewal, we focus a lot on Jesus as Savior. But one of the things we need to realize that Jesus today, through his ascension, is king of the whole world. And because of his ascension, he is no longer confined to time and space. He is in the dimension of God. He is everywhere now. And he is in us, with us, so close to us. He is not there up somewhere in heaven. But rather, when we accept the kingship of Jesus, God reigns. God is near us, for us as our king, because he is a king who came to serve us, to bring us life and wholeness. Now, so we can worship Jesus when we recognize as king, but we can also worship Jesus when we recognize that now Jesus is the high priest before the Father offering sacrifices to him. Let's look at some quotations from the Catholic Catechism that explains to us of these two dimensions of the kingly and the priestly dimension of Jesus to understand fully what the ascension means. In the CCC 664, it is said, being seated at the Father's right hand signifies the inauguration of the Messiah's kingdom. The fulfillment of the prophet Daniel now concerning the Son of Man, to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom that all people, nation and kingdoms should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. Let us look at another quotation for the, from the Catholic Catechism 622. And when I am lifted up from the earth will draw all men to myself the lifting up of Jesus on the cross signifies and announces his lifting up by his ascension into heaven and indeed begins it. Jesus Christ, the one priest of the new and eternal covenant, entered into a sanctuary made by human hands, but into heaven itself now, to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. And so Jesus becomes king as the Messiah. He now fulfills all the promises of the Messiah. His kingdom will last forever and his rule will bring peace, joy, love to humanity. But Jesus has to rule. Right from the very beginning, we see God's sovereignty rejected by man. To be ruled by Jesus means submission, total submission to the Lordship of Jesus. Yes, man, in Christ, 
Submitting ourselves to the Lord is not easy. Yes, we worship Him, but worship also means giving our hearts to Him. And it's an ongoing process of letting go the things in our hearts and making Jesus the center, enthroning Him more and more in our lives. One of the great blessings that I experienced this year has been look at the year of St. Joseph, was that as I began to ask St. Joseph to pray for me, he led me to St. Teresa of, Teresa of Avila's book on the interior castle. And here St. Teresa was saying that to, to encounter the Lord is like going into a castle which has seven rooms. Now, the first three rooms as you enter, there are a lot of creatures that try to prevent you from encountering God. And the door into the castle is through prayer. Yes, when we come to God and we worship Him in prayer, we are entering into God's presence. And St. Teresa of Avila says, God is present within us, so close to us. But it's not easy that there are wild creatures always trying to come and prevent us from going deeper into the presence of God. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we take up this challenge to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus in, in, uh, in Christ, we are called to more and more to let go of all the things that are not right in our life. Let go even our attachments and those things that distract us so that in prayer we can come into a deeper and deeper union with the Lord. And we can experience that Jesus in prayer is the high priest before the Father forever before the Father, pleading for us. He's there with his wounded hands, pleading for us. And as we come to him with our sinfulness, as the book of Hebrews says in chapter 4, verse 16, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we can receive mercy and find grace and help in the time of our need. Yes, we come weak and sinful, but we have a high priest who can sympathize with us with all our weaknesses. And so when we recognize Jesus as the high priest before the Father, we can have confidence in our prayer. We can have confidence in worship. And the third thing I would like to share on this feast as we, as we move towards the Feast of the Ascension is that Jesus calls us to mission. Yes, the last words of Jesus to the disciples was to go and to preach the gospel. In Luke's gospel, St. Luke tells us, Jesus said, go and preach forgiveness of sin, repentance. Yes, we are called to be evangelizers to bring Christ to the world. But one thing that we can recognize in, God, in, the, in the Gospel of Luke, where it says that we are to wait in Jerusalem until we are clothed with power. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be effective evangelizers. Just recently, Pope Francis at the general audience was saying, that there are many groups in the church trying to bring about changes in the church and changes in the life of people. But he was saying, if you don't pray, if you don't open to the Holy Spirit, you are not really working to bring real change in the church or in the life of others. Best in Christ, the Feast of Ascension challenges us 
especially as we are waiting for Pentecost, to go deep into prayer, to worship the Lord, to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus, to recognize that God is not far away, but He is near us as our King and as our priest. When we have that kind of encounter with God, and when the Spirit comes, when we are filled with the presence of God, then we will become evangelizers, missionaries, bringing the love of Christ to others. And God will even work through us signs and wonders, healings and miracles as we go forth and witness, as we proclaim his name, as we witness by our lifestyle a life of love, a life of gentleness, of forgiveness and mercy. Yes, each one of us is called as a Christian to encounter the Lord, to understand his word, to hear his call, to be filled with the Spirit and to go forth in mission. God bless.